Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on the Light Journal Podcast. I'm Jamie Perez, and today I'll be discussing how authenticity is the second level of service. This is the second episode of the Seven Levels of Service series. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the first episode, I do encourage you to do so. So the question is, how is authenticity a form of service, the second level of service to be specific? It starts with the masks that we wear. In many ways, masks are essential to being a functional part of our society. With our masks, we adapt to our circumstances. We develop masks from what society expects us to be. First, as children, by believing everything our family tells us. But as we grow, we add on masks created by our peers, social media, school, religion, and everything else. Mask upon mask, we accept who and what we are by listening to others. We are not the ones designing these masks. They were designed for us by every label, criticism, judgment, and identity people threw at us. Masks are all about perception, both how the world sees us and how we see the world. Through time, we become caricatures of ourselves, lost in all the lies that others told us and we believed. We may think we're being authentic, but how can we know when we're covered up with so much of that other stuff? We're being defined by everything. We're defined by our education, our family, our heritage, our gender, our race, our finances, our looks, our abilities, our job, our religion, and everything else. We think that's who we truly are. It's not. We're being deceived. And we're deceiving ourselves. The mask that our ego wears may give us social acceptance. But those masks also hide us from our true self. They keep us from seeing our intended role and purpose in life. These are the things that imbue life with meaning. Without these masks, we could experience the moments, regardless of what is happening to us or around us, from a place of genuine and authentic feelings, rather than pretending to care, pretending to pray, pretending to be this or that, and pretending to be spiritual, authenticity gives us a way to genuinely connect to ourselves, others, and spirit. That sounds good, but how do you remove a lifetime of labels, criticisms, and judgment that's smothering us? Those words are energy, and that energy has become a part of the mask that we wear, whether negative or positive. We may wear the mask of mommy's good little girl just as easily as we wear the mask of the black sheep of the family. We may be identified as best employee just as easily as least likely to succeed. These labels all have one thing in common. They are someone else's opinion about who we are. Those words, that energy, is coming from others. The more we believe those words, the more that energy weighs us down, separating us from the truth of who and what we are. We're seeing ourselves through the lens of many other people's eyes, many other people's energy. Imagine yourself looking in a mirror. Between you and the mirror is an energetic force field filled with every label, judgment, criticism, and definition people have thrown on you. What would you see? You wouldn't see the true mirror. You'd see the force field and believe that the force field is a true reflection or mirror of you. You would see what everyone decided that you are. Not only that, that same force field goes with you wherever you go. When you're trying to form relationships with others, you're not going to see them as they are. You're going to see them as shadows behind your force field. You're going to see yourself in them. In effect, the world becomes a false mirror, reflecting back what you already believe. It becomes a self-fulfilling belief system that feels impossible to escape, if you even believed you could escape it. 
But here's the thing. If you're listening to this podcast right now, you've already taken the first step to shuffling off all those skewed beliefs about yourself and the world. Finding your authentic self starts with considering the possibility that you and the world around you aren't what you think they are. Can you do that? Can you entertain the idea that your reality is created by what you think and feel, not by what is? As I've discussed in prior podcasts, science has discovered that our body is composed of trillions of sentient cells, and our consciousness exists both within our body and outside of it. In this episode, I'd like to expand on both of those ideas from teachings found in Eastern philosophy. According to some of their teachings, humans possess five energetic sheaths, each nested within the other like Russian dolls. The first, or outermost, sheath would be the physical body. The second sheath is known as breath, or the vital energy body. The third sheath is the mental body. The fourth is the psychic body, and the fifth, or innermost layer, is the bliss body. So what does this have to do with body sentience, consciousness, and the masks that we wear? According to some Eastern philosophers, if we want to experience bliss, also known as the highest state of being, we have to move through the four sheaths separating us from the bliss body. If you listened to the first podcast in this series, you'll recall how the seven layers of service start with being born or becoming human being. This first level of service doesn't require anything else of us. Becoming human is enough. At the first level of service, we learn about our body, whether we want to or not. We become familiar with our appetites, our body functions, health, and illness. This bears a strong likeness to the first energetic sheath. The physical body. It too is about health and wellness. It too is about appetite and fitness. So, what about the second layer or energetic sheath? This is the vital energy body and it focuses on the breath and how we energetically connect to ourself, others, and the environment. Are you seeing this? Doesn't this sound suspiciously like the authenticity level of service? So what's going on here? How can the vital energy sheath help us to re-see ourselves as we truly are? Our vision of self, based on a lifetime of labels that we accept it as true, is nothing but energy. Just like the sheaths, our ego, that mask that we wear, acts like an energetic body. Because we've accepted it as the truest version of self, it has replaced or covered up our vital breath. It has corrupted the way we see ourselves, how we see others, how we see the world. Like every lie, when exposed to the light of truth, it loses its form and power. When put this way, repairing the damage sounds so easy. But we humans like to make everything harder than it needs to be, and that is your choice. You may choose to undergo years of psychotherapy, reliving every trauma and every decision you've made. You may choose to write a memoir filled with every dark experience you've ever had. You may choose hypnotherapy, sweat lodges, or hallucinogenics to purge you of your false beliefs about self. It is your choice, but there is an easier way. You are part of an entangled reality. You not only contribute your experiences, thoughts, and lessons to the whole, The whole contributes their experiences, thoughts, and lessons to you. With the power of the quantum field inside you, as you, and with you, you can choose to erase the false egos and masks. You can choose to remove everything that obscures your authentic self. I'm not saying that one decision will remove a lifetime of masks. It doesn't work that way. That would be like trying to get to the heart of an onion by smashing it. To release all of your masks at once would be mentally, emotionally, and physically crippling. After all, those masks have defined who you are for a very long time. So I propose this instead. With the help of your higher self, you can identify one mask at a time that you're ready to release. And with a simple intention, visualized in whatever way you choose, and stated aloud to the higher consciousness, release it. 
If your experiences are anything like mine, each mask will dissipate like smoke, and you'll experience instant relief. Keep in mind, it may take a while to adjust after losing a mask. Depending on what it was, you may be thrilled with discarding the weight and that false sense of self, but the people around you may not be as happy as you are. Some may even try to bully you into being who you were before. They'll want the old you back, the one they helped to create and maintain. You may feel uncomfortable around certain people, places, activities, and that isn't the only challenge you may face. When you remove a mask, it reveals the one underneath. And since we put on masks to handle situations in our life, that older mask may reignite some of your older issues. Confronting that old mask can be painful, especially if you forgot it was a part of you and you're not ready to address it yet. It can potentially reopen old wounds. You may even get stuck at times, not wanting to face the reality of what that mask represents. When this happens, you do have a choice. You can stay as you are. You don't have to do any more work to find your authentic self if you don't choose to. Or you can ask your higher self to help you to want to remove this mask. And once your intention is true, ask and they'll help you to remove the mask just like the ones before. This process can take months or even years. We accumulate a lot of masks over a lifetime. But if you persist, you will get to your authentic self. You will experience the vital body, the breath that enables you to authentically connect with yourself, others, and the environment. And isn't that the goal? That's how you serve at this level, by removing your false sense of self, the masks you've been wearing, and becoming your true, authentic self. Thanks for listening. I'm Jamie Perez with the Light Journal Podcast. In the next podcast, I'll explore the third level of service, introspection and self-awareness. Blessings on your journey.